Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I hope the previous videos have helped you strengthen your expertise in embedded systems step by step. Now the most common question engineers face is, what are the interview questions one need to prepare for an embedded system job interview? That is exactly what we are going to focus on in the upcoming videos of this series. The embedded systems interview questions and answers. I can guarantee that if you prepare these questions and answers thoroughly, you will be well equipped to clear your interview and even land on a high paying job. The interview questions in embedded system usually fall into these categories. Programming concepts, OS concepts, processor fundamentals, computer architecture, common issues faced under debugging techniques, peripheral IO device basics. And in today's video, we will kick things off with the very first category, programming concepts. The first question we are going to look at it is, what is the purpose of volatile keyword? The volatile keyword informs the compiler not to optimize the code. Let's take an example. In normal scenario, when we declare a variable, the compiler tries to optimize it. What happens is, the variable is fetched into the cache. And the CPU thread keeps reading the value from this cache instead of going back to the main memory each time. But here is the issue. If the variable in main memory is actually mapped to an external device and the device updates the value directly, the compiler has no clue about it. The thread will still read the old cached value and that is wrong. This is exactly where the volatile keyword becomes important. When you use volatile keyword, the compiler is told not to perform the optimization. So the variable will not be kept in the cache. It will continue to be in the main memory. So the thread will always fetch the variable directly from the main memory. That way, it always gets the latest updated value, whether it is changed by the external device or another thread or process or even by an interrupt service routine, an ISR. So in short, volatile makes sure your program is always working with the fresh real-time value from memory. Next, let us look at what is void pointer. A void pointer is a special type of pointer in C that can point to a variable of any data type. Now, you already know in C we have a typed pointer like pointer to integer, a pointer to float and pointer to character. And with this, the value assigned must always match the data type of the pointer. But what if you want a single pointer that can refer to any data type? This is exactly where void pointer come into play. So see here example. So we declared a variable which is pointer to void where you can assign a pointer to an integer value. And this assignment will still work. So in short, a void pointer is like a generic pointer in C. Give you that give you flexibility to point to a different type of variable with the same pointer. Let us go to the next question. Bitwise operations. Bitwise operations are operations that directly manipulate individual bits of an integer data type. These operations work at a binary level of the numbers. Unlike arithmetic operation that work on the whole number, bitwise operations allow you to work on each bit separately. These are frequently used in embedded systems for controlling hardware registers, settings, clearing or toggling individual bits. So here are the bitwise operator that is supported in C. And R, XR, not left shift and right shift. So given this example, AND operator, it, it compares a bit by bit and result in 1 if both the bits are set, otherwise it's 0. So for example, the 5, 0, 1, 0, 1, and the 3, double 0, double 1, right? The first bit are set in both the places. So the outcome is 1. The second bit, it is set in the 3, but not set in 5. So 0. And similarly, it compares each of the bit. So the final outcome is 1. Similarly, look at all other example and try experimenting with it. These are all frequently asked questions in interviews. Now the fourth question, can a variable be volatile 
and const both. Yes, const keyword is used when a variable is value should not change in the code. But in case you want that variable to be it be able to change it by external devices, external events, then a volatile is used. Hence, a variable can be both volatile and a constant. Now, let us go to the next question. What is a reentrant function? A reentrant function can be safely called again before its previous execution is complete without causing any incorrect behavior. A reentrant function can be interpreted in middle of the execution and safely called again and it will work correctly. In embedded systems, interrupts can occur at any given time, any time. If an interrupt calls a function that is already running, it must not cause errors. In the same thing applies to a multi-threaded program. Multiple threads may call the same function simultaneously. Here is the example of what a reentrant function would look like. Okay, in this function, so the variables are passed independently, right? A and B. So every time you call a function, the values that hold in the variables are independent of the previous calls. So it safely returns the addition. If the function is preempted in the middle of the operation, it won't impact the current function call, even if it is comes back later, because the values hold in each of the variable is independent of the pre other calls. And look at the example of non reentrant function. Okay, in this case, this function is using a global variable. So let us say if this function is input in the middle, so global variable will hold some values, and uh, another call is coming. So this function again will update the variable and let us say previously interrupted function call continue, then it will see a new updated value. So that is a problem with non reentrant function. This function cannot be used in a multi-threaded programming or in an interrupt service routine or a call from interrupt service routine. Okay. Hope this video helps you to understand some of the basic programming concepts. Thank you for watching. So, meet you in another video with more programming concepts and uh, interview questions and answers.